Welcome back, I'm Matt Chemist, and today we're going to be deciding which chemicals have the most unfortunate names. So let's get started. So a lot of these molecules, you're going to be a bit surprised by their names. So let's start with an interesting one like sexithiophene. Sexithiophene is a very attractive looking molecule. It's interesting to note that this one is an organic semiconductor. This one's pretty unfortunate, but it's also pretty good. So sexithiophene, I think sexithiophene can go into A tier. Pretty decent molecule. Let's look at another one like sparasol. So sparasol is an interesting one. Sparasol comes from a fungus called Sparasis crispa, which is known as the cauliflower fungus. So this is a natural product. I think sparasol is pretty good. It's a pretty unfortunate name. That one can go right into S tier because I like that one a lot. Now this one here is called anol. And anol is an interesting molecule. You might not have heard of anol before, but it actually is formed through the demethylation of anethol, and anethol is a component of anise and phenyl. Anol is definitely another unfortunate one, so that one can go right into S tier, even though it starts with an A. Now inflatine. Inflatine is an interesting one. Let me just inflate that a little bit. Inflatine is from a soft coral species known as Stoloniferin clavularia inflata. And so that's where its name comes from. You can see from the inflata species, hence the name inflatine. There's also double bonds in it. So this is a natural product. This is also kind of a neat one because you can see it's got a cyclopentene, a cyclohexene, as well as a cyclopropane. So inflatine's a little bit unfortunate for sure, but I don't think it's too bad. I think we can put that one right into D tier. Now, why don't we look at another one called clitorin? Clitorin is an interesting one. You can see that this is like a trisaccharide unit connected to this interesting tricyclic species. Clitorin is found in the plant Clitoria ternatia. So clitorin is definitely an interesting molecule. This one was actually pretty hard for me to find. Uh, I think this one can go right into A tier. So next, let's look at bellendine. If you're not sure what a bellend is, it's a popular term in the UK. Bellendine is found from the monotypic shrub Bellenda montana. So I guess in Montana, they have this special type of Bellenda species. Bellendine, it's pretty good. You know, it relies on British people and their humor, so we can put it into B tier. If bellend was more of a common phrase, maybe it would go into S tier. We have this interesting one here called Fartox. Fartox is really special. It's pentachloronitrobenzene, and this is actually a brand name for a fungicide. Fartox is pretty good. It's a little bit unfortunate. It's not too, too unfortunate. So I think we can probably put that one into C tier. It's not too bad, but you know, it is toxic towards fungi. It's got a pretty unique name though. Here we have Schizocommunin. So Schizocommunin is kind of cool. Schizocommunin comes from a fungus known as Schizophyllum commune. So Schizocommunin is kind of an interesting one. I don't know how unfortunate it is. It's definitely entertaining, but because we're looking at unfortunate, I think this one can probably go into E tier. Even though I have some voices in my head telling me it belongs in a different tier. Nudic acid. Nudic acid is kind of an interesting one. We have this interesting diene ending in a nitrile, which is kind of cool. Nudic acids come from a basidiomycete called Tricholoma nudum. Nudic acids, again, it's a little bit unfortunate, it, but it's pretty good. Uh, you know, it, it could be better, but uh, it, it's okay. I think we could probably put it in D tier. I think that's like fairly reasonable. Next, let's look at Erectone A. So Erectone A is kind of an amusing name. This one comes from a flowering plant called Hypericum erectum, a very unfortunate name for a plant. And if this was a most unfortunately named plants tier list, Hypericum erectum would definitely be the one that takes the cake. Erectone is called an erectone because it's got a ketone as well, as the name implies. There's an own, there's a ketone. So this is a little bit unfortunate as well, but I think we can probably put this one into F tier. It's not too, too unfortunate. It's pushing it a little bit to call that one unfortunate. Now this one's cockalone. Cacalone is kind of a funny one. It's from the roots of Cacalia decomposita, which is, again, another great name from the biologists. Cacalia decomposita is pretty funny. It would be funnier if they found this compound on its own. It's also found with just like the methyl group sticking around in the phenol form. So Cacalone, again, you know, it's a little bit unfortunate. I think we could be a little bit harsher on this one as well and put it into E tier, but it's, it's okay. Next, we have a couple tobacco-themed molecules. So here we have Siglitazone. This is the one zone where you're allowed to smoke. It's in the siglit zone. Now this one's uh, not a very good pun, I know, I apologize. Fortunately, this isn't a no pun zone. This is a synthetic drug related to anti-diabetic drugs. This was like one of the early prototypes, but it didn't make the cutoff to get it into clinical use. So siglitazone, it's a little bit funny, but again, not that funny compared to some of the other ones. We can put siglitazone right into F tier. Next we have gamma phagarine. Here we have another molecule involving British nomenclature. So gamma phagarine is from something called the artar root, which is also known as Phagara xanthoxyloides lamb. This one's an unfortunate name for sure, phagarine. It's, a, it's you know, cigarette themed. A fag is what a British person will call a cigarette on occasion. 
This one's a little bit unfortunate. We could probably put this one into C tier. That name definitely blows. Now here we have Epstein's favorite molecule. We have Loline. This is from the grass Lolium temelentum. Loline is definitely an unfortunate name. Some people might be thinking that this will make you laugh out loud, and it depends on which pun you're looking at in here. So Loline has somewhat of an unfortunate name, so I think we could probably put this one into D tier. Loline is actually one member of a class of several lolines, and so there's ones with different analogs coming off of the methyl amino group, by the way. So this isn't like the only loline, there's actually a whole, uh, there's a whole library of them. Here we have a classic butanal, also known as butyraldehyde. This is probably one of the first chemistry jokes most organic chemistry students come across for its resemblance to a couple words that are very familiar. Coincidentally enough, Wikipedia says that it has an unpleasant smell, which might not be a surprise to you based on its name. I think butanal has to be an S tier, easy S tier, very unfortunate. This one's kind of cool, this is called Longdacin. I would say that this molecule probably belongs in F tier because it's not an unfortunate name. In fact, it's an incredibly fortunate name. It was named after what it does. Longdacin gets this name because it lengthens the circadian rhythm in mammals when administered. So this will lengthen the circadian rhythm, this will increase the length of your day because it affects the circadian rhythm. So long dacin, it'll lengthen your day. It would be cool if they could make a short dacin which might be able to decrease the length of your circadian rhythm. So this one's definitely interesting, but it is not, uh, not a very unfortunate name, so we can put it right into F tier. Next we have vaginatin. Vaginatin is a sesquiterpene from the root of selenum vaginatum, another really unfortunate name. Here I think we could put this one probably right into S tier. Why don't we do urinate? Urinate's really straightforward. We could have many different salts of urinate. We could have sodium urinate. You could have diurinates when there's multiple of these bound together. Urinate, it's it's pretty good. I think that's like a classic. I think classic's got to go right into S tier. Super, super classic. Another classic is arsol. It's like parole, phosphol. It's just got an arsenic instead. So instead of a parole, which has a nitrogen, we have an arsenic, and so it's an arsol. And how could IUPAC disagree? They had to let it happen. And you can bet your butt this one's going to go into A tier. Speaking of betting your butt. Here we have Rimadog. Now, I would not recommend anybody rims the dog. This one used to be called Rimadog until it got rebranded. The irony of this one is this one's used as a COX inhibitor. COX is an enzyme, cyclooxygenase. It's usually involved with inflammation. And so this is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, an NSAID. And so this is a COX inhibitor for dogs. And so Rimadog, it's, it's used in veterinary medicine. When you're thinking of a medication, the one thing you don't want to be thinking about is rimming a dog, so that one can go right into S tier. That, that is probably the most unfortunate name on here, and I laughed out loud when I saw that one. Okay, here we have Forskolin. Forskolin's another really funny one. I couldn't actually figure out where the name for this one came from, but this is a natural product occurring in the blue spur flower, and the blue spur flower is used in some traditional medicine. So Forskolin, that one's like, okay. Now, I don't think we're going to have enough room for S tier, so we're going to have to kind of extend S tier into the box on the right here. Here we have pubicine, and pubicine is one of the funniest ones here. Okay, so the reason pubicine is so funny, other than its name, is that it's found in a plant known as Discaria pubensins, and the common name for this is the hairy anchor plant. Okay, that's a pretty funny one. Pubicine is found in the hairy anchor plant. That is like the s -est of S tiers. This can go right into S tier. Now we have two last ones here, diarrhea and cumin. Diarrhea is technically a misnomer. Usually it's called biurea, but diarrhea sounds funnier. This one can go probably into B tier because it's biurea and starts with a B, so that's reasonable. Diarrhea is actually used in bread flour. <laughs> Ironically, you might not think that's something that should be going in food, but this is a common ingredient in bread flour, so it is in food, but it gets broken down once it's in your body and excreted really easily. Now, last but not least, we have cumin also pronounced as cumin. Cumin is a derivative of cumic acid, and cumic acid was originally discovered in cumin, the powder, and as a consequence, that's where it gets its name. So cumin, it's actually a really important molecule. It's used in the global production of acetone and phenol through something called the cumin process. If you haven't looked into the cumin process, uh, I'd encourage you to check it out. So cumin is another S-tier molecule, and it's just so funny. If you want to see more tier lists like this in the future, make sure you subscribe and click that bell, and I hope you have a great day.